Living organisms can best be distinguished from non-living things by determining the presence or absence of. So basically, without even going any further, mm -hmm. at this point, what we have to do, we have to interpret the statement correctly, mm -hmm. okay? So the statement is telling us that there is a difference, distinguish, difference between living organisms and non-living things. Mm -hmm. So once an organism stops living, it becomes a non-living thing, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And what this statement tells you is basically says, what is the best way out of these four options to tell if something is a living organism or if something has become or has been a non-living thing. What is the best way uh, to determine that? Out of these four, we have to choose one. And now remember, not only the presence of any of these, but also the absence of any of these should tell us, should help us understand if it's a living organism or a non-living thing. Mm -hmm. So now that, you, we, now that we understand that, right? Now that we have an idea of what, what this thing actually means, we can move on to try to answer, um, uh, well, not answer, but match this statement to option A, right? Mm -hmm. So carbon atoms, let's talk about carbon atoms. Carbon in general, if it's, Okay, is it present in living organisms? Carbon. Yeah. Sugar, right? Yeah. Glucose. Yes. Is carbon present in non-living things? No. Yes, the answer is yes. Carbon is present everywhere. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're living or not, uh, there's going to be carbon. So the point I'm trying to make here is car by, by looking for carbon and trying to use carbon to differentiate or distinguish mm -hmm. a non-living thing from a living organism would be impossible, would be very impossible because they both have it. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell if one is, which is which, by saying, well, this one has carbon, so it probably is living. You can't do that. So option A is incorrect. Carbon is everywhere. Mm -hmm. B, oxygen atoms. That is probably the most confusing one, right? Because you would think the presence of oxygen indicates presence of life, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you remember how we talked about aerobic and anaerobic respiration yeah. which basically means there are organisms that can live without mm -hmm. oxygen so the lack of oxygen does not necessarily mean the lack of life something that may appear to have no oxygen can still be living so when you think of oxygen as the determining factor, you would be really confused. So I don't think that's the right answer because um, there, are, there are living organisms that don't require oxygen. So the lack of it would not mean it's a non-living thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So no, B is out. Metabolic activities. What are metabolic activities? We have to understand that first. Now, metabolic activities uh, basically involve essential life functions. Mm -hmm. These are the metabolic activities. What are the life's basic functions? What are they? There are seven. Growth, transport, respiration, regulation, excretion, Synthesis, growth, synthesis, transport, regulation, respiration, 
excretion, nutrition. Those seven are essential life functions. Metabolic activities is just another name for the whole group. That's what it means. The presence of these activities that we just mentioned, does that mean something is a living organism? And if we don't have metabolic activities, does that mean it's a non-living thing? Moving on to D, chemical reactions. How can you tell by using chemical reactions? How can this help you distinguish living organisms from non-living things? If it can't help you, then it should be a wrong answer. Can it help you distinguish the, between the two? Just because something that is not living doesn't mean chemical reaction stops. So what do you think is the right answer? Carbon, oxygen, chemical reactions, or metabolic activities? Why do you say metabolic activities? Why? If something is alive, right? Does it have metabolic activities? Does this stick have metabolic activities? And it's a non-living thing. So could you use metabolic activities as a tool to distinguish between a living organism and a non-living thing? Answer C is the correct answer because in order for life to sustain itself, you must consume. It doesn't matter if you consume sunlight directly or sugar indirectly. It's energy. They came from the sun anyway. So, but if you don't require that, such as the stick, then there is no metabolic activity. Moving on, 34. Which term includes all the activities required to keep an organism alive? You have to paraphrase. Make sure you interpret this question correctly. Make it simple. Break it down. What does it say? What does it actually mean? Because a lot of times all these questions are really complex. They really do a good job, examiners. They try to confuse students, right? With all these big words and, and unnatural patterns of speech and whatnot. So again, what does it say? So these are terms, right? Obviously, it looks like it's referring to these four. Okay, so the question names these words terms. Okay, we know that. So which word? means or combines or defines all the activities that an organism needs to stay alive. So which word defines that activity that is essential to staying alive? Option A says growth. Okay. Do you think growth is essential to staying alive? I mean, growth is essential to a certain point, right? But the lack of growth does not necessarily mean you're dead. It's not the best answer. Let's put it that way. B, excretion. Before you start thinking about excretion, excretion is not just... When, when, when you see the word excretion, I want you to be really clear, okay? It's really important. Excretion does not mean eliminating waste from the body. Excretion means removal of waste from a cell, but not a body. So when you think about excretion, that is irrelevant when it comes to an organism, unless you, you are an amoeba, which is a one cell organism. But again, regardless if you are an amoeba or a human, does the excretion mean all the activities to stay alive? No, it's just only one part, right? And again, think about it. when you say all the activities, 
Remember, what were all of the activities that you must have in a living organism to stay alive? Seven of them. Growth is only one of them. How about this? Is it everything or just one of the seven? How about this? How about this? It means everything. Metabolism actually is everything. All seven are called metabolic activities, which is metabolism. Moving on. 35. Which group contains only molecules that are each assembled from smaller organic compounds? Wow. They already gave you the answer in that question. For example, let me point it out. Bingo. That's a big giveaway. What does organic mean? Organic versus inorganic. Organic means something that contains carbon and hydrogen. It basically says you have to look for something that will have carbon and hydrogen. Is it organic or inorganic? There is carbon in water. It's H2O. It's inorganic. There is no carbon in water. So the moment you see water, it eliminates A. Anything that will have water will be incorrect because water is inorganic compound. So B is incorrect. We're left with C and D. Now let's look into these two. Again, stick to the word organic. Which one of these have elements that are not organic? Look at this. Proteins are everywhere. So simply by looking at it from a logical perspective, you know you cannot get away with proteins. Now, DNA is only in three of them, but again, if you eliminate by water, these two are gone, so you are definitely stuck with protein and DNA, and now you just have to compare. Here are the two. Protein, protein, fine. DNA, DNA, fine. Starch, starch. That's sugar, carbon, fine. Fat. We're only stuck with the fat and carbon dioxide. Which one is organic now between the two? In order for something to be organic, you have to have carbon, C, and H. Carbon dioxide is CO2. There is no H. Carbon dioxide has only two elements, C and two of oxygen. But there is no H, there is no hydrogen. So it cannot be organic. And if this is not organic, this must be. The correct answer is C. Organisms combine simple molecules to form complex molecules by the process of. The answer is right there. All you have to know is the definition of one of these. And this statement is literally the definition of one of these options. So let's go with A. Ingestion. What is ingestion? No. A is incorrect. B. Synthesis. Does synthesis mean combine simple molecules to form complex molecules? Does synthesis mean putting something together, creating a new out of many other elements and what's the opposite of synthesis breakdown so these are actually opposites this is a breakdown this is the combination of many into one okay that just eliminated itself right there because it's the opposite how about regulation let's just make sure that we have the right answer we have to eliminate c for that so what is regulation? Does regulation mean this? Yeah, not really. It's irrelevant. So synthesis, B is correct. All right, 37. The chart below, which is this, contains information, that is information, about some structures, okay, structure, 
some, some sort of structures, right? Found in single cell organisms. Yeah, amoeba, right? So, okay, we're talking about structures. We're talking about some single cell organisms. I get it. And without going into too much of it, let's just see what they want from us, right? Because at this point, if I start thinking too much about this chart without knowing what I need to actually do with that, I may waste my time. So far, all I know is that this is some sort of chart, has some sort of information about some sort of structures in single cell organisms. That's all I care at this point, right? So good for you, thank you, moving on. The information in this chart best illustrates the biological concept. Okay, before going into any of these, let's go back to the chart now. It says that it illustrates, shows the biological concept because there's a structure and this structure does something. So we have three biological concepts. Okay, I don't know what they want from us, right? But at least we understood now yeah. what this has to do with this. Now, thanks to this information, I understood the relationship between these two. Okay, A. A says that these three biological concepts, A tells us that all organisms contain these structures. Is that information correct? It says all, remember I told you, be careful with absolute notions, right? All organisms contain these. Well, we know not all animal cells don't have chloroplasts. Yeah. So is A correct? No. no. Single cell organisms. Now, you see, the A is gone. Mm -hmm. That's good, right? Single cell organisms contain structures that function, contain structures. I like this. See? It says single cell. Basically what B is doing, B is paraphrasing everything I see. It's saying exactly so far what I see. Mm -hmm. Single cell organisms, right there, right? Mm -hmm. Contain structures. Found, you see? Yeah. Contain structures. Okay, single cell structures. So far, so good. That function, right? Yeah. In maintaining homeostasis. Hmm, an interesting sentence, right? Mm -hmm. um, maintain, look at this, maintain, homeostasis, balance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be water balance only, but water balance definitely affects homeostasis. That already matches, right? Mm -hmm. So I like this answer. But we cannot be sure if we don't go through other ones. C, the organs found. Now, look at this. The focus is shifting. In the beginning, the focus was on all single cell organisms. Well, that's wrong. <clears throat> this focus is only single cell organisms. That's good. This one, the focus is on the organs. Do you know of of one organ that evolved from chloroplast? There is no organ like liver, heart, yeah. right? Yeah. See, when you say organs, you have to think about organs. Lungs, heart, you have all these different organs. Um, I don't see how chloroplast is going to grow, right? Mm -hmm. And become something else. It's gonna stay chloroplast. Mm -hmm. Correct or wrong? Wrong. Correct. Wrong. D. Again, look at the focus. All organs, multicellular organisms. Why are we talking about multicellular organisms? I thought we were focusing on single cell organisms. Before even reading the whole thing, I have a problem with that. Why am I reading multicellular stuff? 
Is that relevant? No. It's irrelevant. I don't care what it says over here. That is wrong already. We're not supposed to be doing that. Mm -hmm. This chart only talks about single cell organisms, cell structures. Out. So which one is correct? B. Thank you. When the human body is responding to stress, their hormone adrenaline is released. A short time later, the body returns to normal. This is an example of how a human does what? B is irrelevant. How about A? That's an immune system. It's irrelevant as well. So A and B are incorrect. How about C? When adrenaline is triggered in response to stress, is that an example of how a human maintains cellular organization? Irrelevant. How about this? Maintains dynamic equilibrium. If you draw a line, that's static right there. Mm -hmm. That's like no pulse. Dynamic is this. Mm -hmm. Going up and down, up and down, that's dynamic. So, um, maintains dynamic equilibrium. So, what, what that means is when a human body hits the stress, adrenaline kicks in and goes up too. The more stress, the more adrenaline, right? Yeah. That's dynamic. Equilibrium, it tries to balance counters. Mm -hmm. It tries to counter the effect of stress. Mm -hmm. it, count, it tries to negate the effect of stress. That's the equilibrium, okay? okay? So D is definitely your correct answer here in this case.